Coffee Shop. I was driving across the twilight zone, known as the Canadian Prairies, in the middle of the night. To be precise, 3.43 a.m., and I was falling asleep at the wheel. There was little traffic and damn little in the way of lights along the highway, and I knew that if I didn't get some coffee down soon, I'd wind up in the ditch, or worse. And that is why I turned off at Regina, the city that rhymes with fun. The street I pulled onto was brightly lit, but there was no one around, no sign of any people, and not even any cars. It was like the world ended, and no one thought to turn out the lights. I found a donut hole a few blocks up the street. The donut crypt. The donut crypt? I blinked my eyes and would have rubbed them, if I could have taken my hand off the wheel. What kind of a chain? Must be some kind of joke. But I really, really needed coffee. There were no cars in the parking lot, but there appeared to be people inside, so I tried the door, found it open, and entered. Three or four persons sat alone at tables, scattered throughout the room. While I didn't stare at them, I could see they all had a shared appearance. They were all slight, with pale skin, pinched features, and long, unkempt hair that looked like it needed washing. Their eyes had a reddish tinge, and they were dressed in dark clothing. But my focus was on coffee. The woman behind the counter looked just like the customers, except she wore black eyeshadow and long, very fake, fake eyelashes, which curtained her red eyes. First time I've been served by a vampire in a donut hole, I said to myself. Her voice had a droning hypnotic quality, and I found it hard to follow what she was saying, but I just kept repeating, coffee, black, coffee, black, till I managed to get the idea across. I slapped a couple of coins, a loony and a toonie on the counter, and staggered over to a stool where I could look out the front window. I took a sip and almost spit it all over the window in front of me. The coffee was rancid, if coffee could be rancid. It had a strong, metallic aftertaste, which started to make me feel quite sick. But I needed to drink it. I was almost delirious with exhaustion. I had to drink it, drink it, drink it. I must have nodded off momentarily, raising my face from its intense contemplation of my coffee cup. I looked out towards the dark street, catching the reflection of the room behind me and blinked. I could see the other people in the shop, the loners at their solitary tables, and none of them had heads. (laughs) None of them had heads. I could make out their torsos, their full bodies, and I could see them raising their arms to drink or to eat, but none of them had heads. I blinked and looked again. This time, they'd vanished completely. I took a quick look over my shoulder. The other uh, diners were still parked at their lonely tables, contemplating who knew what. The goth chick was still behind the counter, looking oddly in my direction. I thought, I really must be losing it. Better drink up and go. I quickly sucked down the rest of my coffee with a shudder, and again had to fight the urge to throw up. I stood up, even though I felt wobbly and had to put my hand on the counter to steady myself. Being Canadian, I went to return my coffee cup to the counter. I realized everyone, even the vampire behind the counter, was staring at me. And then my vision suddenly cleared, and I could see my surroundings for the first time. Instead of donuts and pastries, the display cabinet was full of body parts. Fingers, toes, hands, feet, noses, ears, even eyes. 
and, and other things I really didn't want to see. A second cabinet held terrines, one filled with a crimson soup that looked suspiciously like blood, the other a chili in which floated what appeared to be pieces of flesh. A chili in which floated what appeared to be pieces of flesh, human flesh. I blinked my eye, but the whole awful array was still there. And then I saw the display ads over the counter, advertising blood, plasma, lattes, and various flavors. O, A, B, A, B, plasma, and the ad for the breakfast Flesher Witch. Flesher Witch? And, and then the ad for Lady Fingers? My coffee cup fell to the floor and shattered as I staggered towards the door, but not before I heard a loud series of pops and saw the heads of the others had detached themselves from their bodies and were now floating in midair and still staring at me. I wasn't really sure I could drive, but I knew I had to get away and, and get away fast. As I fell in behind the wheel, I could see into the lighted interior of the donut shop and could see the serving vampire running for the door to open it, I guess to let the floating heads out, to let the heads fly out. I didn't wait to see, and, and I didn't have the nerve to look in the rearview mirror. I rejoined the highway. I was no longer fighting sleep, but still felt slightly sick to my stomach. I vowed to stop at the next Tim Hortons, or a and W I passed, to get some normal food and fee, or else find a roadside rest area to pull in and catch some sleep. For the moment, my main goal was to put as much distance between me, the donut crypt, and the floating heads as possible. The road across the prairies is a lonely, deserted one, a long, straight ribbon without lights, or much of anything. No houses, not even any trees, hardly any other cars, other headlights. Just a long, dark ribbon of asphalt, illuminated by my headlights. My head was swimming and my stomach began to ache badly. Just what had been in that bloody coffee? Oh, well that was a bad choice of words there. Cold sweat was pouring down my brow so I rolled down the window, hoping some fresh air might revive me. I heard a noise and, and turned my head to look out. A and then the head was in the car, its teeth or fangs or whatever, sinking into the soft flesh of my left ear, as if it was trying to pull it off. I screamed, my foot slamming down on the accelerator, as I splashed the dashboard and the windshield with projectile vomit. I took both hands off the wheel uh, to, and to try and pull that head off me, to, to make it let go. I could feel the warm blood running down the side of my neck. The car was heading towards a curve leading to an overpass, but instead I went in a straight line at 140 kilometers an hour, right off the road and into the waters of a marshy slough. I woke up in the hospital. The plastic surgeon was able to repair most of the damage to your left ear. What bit you? I pretended not to understand the question. I also pretended to have simply fallen asleep at the wheel. The other thing that puzzled us was all the blood in your stomach. Uh, we thought it was caused by internal bleeding, but we were unable to find any injuries, so it's a puzzle. It was almost like you'd drunk blood. Uh, a lot of blood. You haven't been drinking blood, have you? Again, I pretended not to understand. If I had drunk any blood, it, it wasn't intentional. All I had wanted, all I had really wanted, was a black donut shop coffee. A regular black donut shop coffee. Somewhere... On the main drag, off the highway in Regina, Saskatchewan, the city that rhymes with fun, there is a donut hole which doesn't serve coffee and donuts, 
but has a more pungent menu. But I'll leave it to you, dear listener, to find it, as I never intend to set foot in Regina again, fun or not. After all, once bitten, twice shy. <laughs> <laughs> 